we are. Week 11, right or Wednesday. Oh my God. I have had to follow my own advice from last week for the author overwhelm. Not just because of the uh, author aspect of it, though that is definitely playing its role. Just in general, getting overwhelmed with everything that has been going on. I have taken it upon myself to be, you know, a crazy lady and drive my two older kids to Camp Invention all week, which has been, you know, fun because it's four hours out of every day to drive them to and from. (sighs) And so my day is cut short, my time is cut short, and I feel like I'm not getting what I need to accomplish finished. And I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I still have hair. Can you see there's hair? That's, I'm surprised because I'm pretty sure I've been pulling it out. Oh my God. And then on top of it, you know, technology, it's lovely. Just when you have to like get things moving, go quickly, go quickly. It goes, Oh yeah, never mind. I'm just going to sit here and spin around because you have too many tabs. You've had too many tabs open for a while. Oh, well, we'll just sit here. So here I am. I don't have time for this nonsense, but here I am. <laughs> All right. So this week I decided on the topic. I was talking to Evan, the 11 year old that was joining me uh, not long ago about what he would like to see on one of these. And he said that he, he'd like to have me read one of the chapters, maybe the first chapter of Polarities. And I'm thinking next week I might do that because uh, in case you haven't been listening next week, I am doing a cover reveal for Polarities. And it is also going to be available for pre-order. So, well, on Kindle, not on the paperback version, but the Kindle version will be available. Um, So this week instead, I decided to talk about author inspirations because he was asking some questions this morning. Well, was it this morning? Maybe this morning, maybe yesterday morning. I don't know. They've all blended together these days. It's, It's like one big blur and my brain has like mushed out. So, um, at any rate... I get asked that question a lot, like where do I get some of the inspirations for the novels that I've written? Um, Obviously, it looks like there's just one novel at the moment, but there are three that I've been working on for the past seven years, and more in my head that I've kind of started, and um, some that I've actually started and put down on paper I just haven't done a whole lot more with yet. So at any rate, for me, when it comes to author inspirations... I find that it's all over the place. I I take in my inspiration for things that have ended up in my books from so many different places. Sometimes nature. So being outside, I love nature. Helps me clear my head and kind of get away from the typical stress of sitting and staring at a computer screen that is not moving. And so in in Pendamus, just in general, the idea for the Junkos actually came from me just being outside for whatever reason I was putzing around saw these little gray birds on the ground scritching across the grass and I was like those are the birds I want to put in my book I don't know why it wasn't a a, like actual cognitive thing where I was searching for the perfect book perfect bird but that for whatever reason I like that bird and I had one that was actually outside Um, it must have gotten too cold or something that morning because it was an October morning and um, it was just kind of sitting there chilling out, and it literally did have that white beak like uh, Kylum does in Polarities and Pandamus. Hello, Colin. Nice to see you this time. I can actually see that you're here. I don't know if you're saying anything because this thing does not actually tell me comments again. <sighs> it's kind of a pain in the butt that way. Um, I'll go across. Nope. Still nothing. Just you. So if you're saying anything, I can't, I can't see it. I will let you know if it pops on the screen. Um, so for, um, that particular bird, it was just kind of hanging out. It must've been, like I said, too cold and it just kind of was chilling out in the grass and I checked on it, let it, let me pet it. It was fine. Flew off, uh, a little bit later and I decided that was going to be the inspiration for Kylum. And, um, that's kind of strange, but all right. The other thing that um, I'm getting some messages from my husband saying that it's not, the broadcast isn't quite working properly on his uh, computer, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but hopefully the video will still post and it'll be just fine. Hey, Sherry, I see you have joined as well. Nice to see you this week. Woohoo! I, I don't know if you're commenting. I can't ever see the comments, but well, not a, there was one time, one whole time I was able to see comments, so I don't know what, what has uh, gone back and changed, but whatever. 
So this week I'm talking about author inspirations and, um, again, so my inspirations, nature, that's one big one cause it, it helps me de-stress and gets me outside of my head. And so I find a lot of things. Um, when Pandamus was originally being written, I was looking at a lot of caves. Um, we had done a couple of tours of caves and I had visited a friend in, in Colorado, Kate, and, uh, she has a cave. So we went and checked that cave out and it was just a lot of fun. So caves were, were on my mind which is kind of how the haven and um, the lateral were brought to life. And um, I find a lot of things come from dreams. Not all of them work out for inspirations for novels or things that will happen in a novel, but you'll find in Revolutions, and Sherry can attest to this one, I have one in there. She, she's wondered where it's come from and why on earth I've used it, but there's something in there called White Elephants you'll find in Revolutions. And I was trying to think up ways that Vidius, the, the villain, could do something even creepier. And um, instead of just using the, the creatures that are out and about. And so my brain, in whatever weird capacity in Dreamland, decided to come up with these weird things. I actually saw the scene in my head play out the way it did in uh, the way that I wrote it. So I don't know, if Sherry, if you know that. But um, so these white elephants are kind of creepy and I don't want to spoil it because it's, it's just kind of a, a weird, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Weird concoction. And, um, so sometimes dreams do pull in things that are kind of interesting to, to think about. In polarities, there's also another one, um, Vidius has a fixation on blood and, in the blood ties of things. And so you'll find that out in, in polarities. And so, one of the things that I pulled in from another dream was uh, these blood scu- blood sculptures. And it was kind of one of those gross moments in my dream. And I woke up being kind of grossed out up by it. So I thought I would incorporate it and gross anyone else out that has an icky vibe with blood. I, I can't say that I'm like completely scared of it. I don't freeze or anything. But at the same time, I, I don't overly like to see bloody gross things. So... Um, another, another interest is just your basic interest. So for me with, um, the books that I've written, I have a, an affinity for Egypt. And this was the conversation I had with Evan, the 11 year old, um, I think it was this morning. He was asking me, um, why Vidius has like, a, he, in the next books, you'll see that he has, um, when he presents himself, he has a, an outfit. And one of his um, appearances, he has an ibis mask. And so there's a, a head, a mask that's on there. And the ibis comes from and stems from the idea of Thoth. And so I have an affinity for Egyptian um, mythologies and lore and a lot of the, the ancient um, cultures, actually. But so this particular Egyptian god, Thoth, is my inspiration for what Vidius decided to mimic. And for those of you that are interested in why, I suggest Googling it. It might give you some clues into the type of person that uh, Vidius really is and why he chose uh, Thoth as his kind of manifestation. I, I also have interest in there, I guess, things like Harry Potter. I mean, Evan was also bringing up the fact that I have these holographic walls and it reminded him of Harry Potter and uh, platform nine and three quarters, just movies, books, um, games, things that you enjoy, uh, sports you enjoy, they all end up in books in some way, shape or form. Um, the, the way that people are in, in the novels for me, it's also in some ways inspirational of the people around me. So with Runa, uh, Sherry will know this. (laughs) She's kind of the inspiration for the two colored eyes. Sherry and I have been friends and best friends since, oh gosh, she would know this better than me. I always say it wrong. I want to say eighth grade and then I'm like, is it seventh grade? I I don't know. It's right in that area. And um, she has two different colored eyes. And so for me, I thought it would be fun to have a a main character who ends up going through a situation where her eyes are two different colors. And in in Ruta's situation, it is kind of a, a brought on type of thing, but it's still... To me, I, I just, it was fascinating and something I wanted to incorporate. And other people in my life have lent their personalities, the way that they are, um, to ca- other characters in the book. For instance, one of my friends, Kate, she is 
the inspiration for Connie. I can't say that she is exactly like Connie. Be- well, first of all, Connie's um, got Asian uh, appearance and Kate does not. But um, just the attitude that she has. She's very um, blunt, but she's sweet underneath. She's artistic, but she's uh, strong and she's got like that hard outer shell. So it takes some time to get to know her. And there are other people where it's just like the, the different aspects. My husband, um, he kind of reminds me of Trayton, although Trayton was written before I actually met him. And so for me, it was kind of interesting to see kind of the correlations that happen with that, the dimples and things like that. Um, and when you're writing, you often will think of what would this person do? What would this person say? How would they react? Um, and, and you can base it off of those people that you already know and, and interactions you've already had. So that's really cool. Um, and sometimes they're just complete flashes of insight. The, the book itself, the series, when it first arrived in my brain, it was completely out of nowhere. I was working on a, a different type of book. Um, it was kind of a suggestion. Just I needed to, to write something. I needed to do something else with with what I was doing. And Sherry, uh, beta reader extraordinaire, gave me the idea of writing, I think it was a ghost, like a woman falls in love with a ghost or something like that. Um, and so we were kind of going back and forth with that. And it wasn't very long. I, I want to say it was a couple of weeks and the idea of Pendamus kind of took over and that kind of little start went off to the side. So that sort of thing happens. And sometimes like names will pop in my head, just Trayton. He came out of nowhere. I didn't know where he was or who he was. In fact, when I started um, Pendamus, I, it was a complete pantsing novel. There was there was no, um, I guess, overarching uh, outline to, to happen with that. I had to piece it all together as I was on the fly. The other two books, I'd say that there, I had more of an outline in my brain, but not so much written down, a little bit written down. Um, I knew where I was going with it, and I knew how I wanted to get there, but... I kind of let the characters lead the way a little bit too because it seemed like that's what they were interested most in doing. So um, another thing was um, Vidius. I was trying to think of a name for, a last name for him. And I was trying to, it was like out of out of nowhere, just Goddard came into me, my head. And I, at the time, didn't realize, you know, that it's also very much tied to space-related stuff. Um, so I found that to be kind of funny later on. Um, I probably had seen it at some point when I was looking at some of the, the space information that I like to read and, and uh, kind of had a chuckle about that later on. So for me, those are the, the areas of inspiration that I have noticed uh, will come out of my books and into my books. And uh, so if you're in my real life and don't want to be written into a book, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance because you most likely will be in some some way, shape, form, or another. Um, oh, sending a lot of ums again this week. It's my brain's fifty thousand miles, like light years down. I don't even know. It's been such a week, and it's only Wednesday. So, yeah. Cover reveal for polarities. It's happening Monday, and pre-orders for it will be happening then as well. Stay tuned. I am hoping to get um, the. Final details for Revolutions finished as well. Uh, the, the novel itself is done. It's at Beta Readers right now. And I'm making some final tweaks. Once that's done, it'll be also getting um, set up in Amazon for pre-orders. And a cover reveal will happen on September 11th. So I think that's it for this week. I can't think of anything else I need to chat about or explain I do need to find my brain again. Uh, it's here somewhere. I'm fairly certain. <sighs> Maybe once this camp invention week is over, I'll, I'll gain my <laughs> brain back. I hope so, anyway, for love. All right, guys, that's week 11. We will see you next week. And if all goes well and according to plan, I will be reading the first chapter of Polarities in case anybody wants to check it out. All right, guys, we will see you next week. <laughs>